Welcome to our French Collection podcast, a go-to podcast for everything French. Hosted by me, Annette Charlton, with guests, candid insights into living in France, travel discussions and more, our show will transport you to the land of cheese and croissants. So now let's dive into our next episode. Hello and thanks for joining me. Annette from A French Collection and it's so nice to be back behind the microphone having a talk with you and uh, sharing what I love uh, France and everything French. It's been a couple of weeks since I've uh, sat at my desk, popped my headphones on and uh, started to uh, have a chat with you and share what I share with you uh, via the microphone and uh, reach you wherever you are when you're listening to podcasts. So uh, thank you for joining me if you're heading into work or you've finished a shift and it's late at night and I'm keeping you company at night. Um, Thank you if uh, you like to multitask and you're washing the dishes or packing the dishwasher and uh, you're listening to your phone with your pods in your ear, whatever you're doing. Thanks very much. I'm very passionate about France and I love to share things with you. Not sure if you're catching uh, my lives over on my social channels, but uh, I was sharing that next podcast would be about Paris. And while I've been busy for the last few weeks doing some really great uh, sort of family and, and house things, we've been doing some work on the on the roof and I've been hanging off the end of a paintbrush and doing some modifications in the house, which is rather exciting but uh, just not able to quite fit everything in. So, But when I was talking about what would be coming up next, I wanted to share with you a little bit about Paris. On my socials, I was uh, sharing some uh, great books that uh, were about Paris, particularly building the Eiffel Tower. And uh, in the uh, last week, what I've done is I've created a great resource for you. So the blog, if you're not following me or you're not uh, getting the uh, blog post directly into your inbox. You can always subscribe. The blog is afrenchcollection.com and it's about France and everything uh, French. I live between France and, and Australia and uh, I've starting to collect some resources and create some guides for everybody. Now published over on the blog is a, a book guide so that if you're looking for books books that I've reviewed, books that I talk about uh, uh, that come across in relevant uh, podcasts or sometimes I share them on my lives. I know some of you have actually gone out and bought the books that uh, you've heard about, you've seen about uh, from, from my shares. So I thought, look, I'd make it even easier for you. So I've now got a, a gift guide, a book guide. You can jump on that if you go searching for uh, in the shop tab, in the shop part of the website. Go in and you'll see a lot of the books that I've reviewed and talk about. It does link up across to Amazon. So uh, to be uh, transparent there, there is a small commission that I will earn from your purchase from Amazon. But of course, there is no extra charge or the price will be the price will be exactly the same as if you jumped uh, directly on Amazon. So I'm hoping that's going to help some of you. I guess too with the gift uh, season coming up, that might narrow down and help you find something for the francophile or the special person in your life. So in creating that guide that was sort of driven by the book that I shared which was about Paris when I was talking about what would be coming up on the podcast next and one of my readers went and bought a couple of those books that she liked the sound of hence the uh, the book guide book gift guide is now published on the blog so Paris has just got too many amazing things to be able to condense it obviously into one podcast we're going to do this over a few They may not always be consecutive, but I'm going to share with you some of the uh, places that I think are fantastic to see. And if you've seen them before, maybe you don't know everything about them. Maybe there's some history involved or uh, some important people that are associated with these places or these events. So that's what we're going to have a look at together over a few podcasts when we dive in a little bit more into the backstory of some of the iconic and some of the secret places of Paris. So today, 
not secret at all, but it's the booksellers along the sign. So along the river, the Seine River, there's the booksellers that I'm sure you've seen in plenty of photographs, uh, prints. You might have even stopped and had a look yourself on one of your trips in into the city of Paris. The booksellers are a important part and an iconic image of the central area along the river. So let's have a look at them today. So when I was in Paris last time, I spent quite a bit of time uh, talking to some booksellers there. They sell secondhand rare edition books, posters, and a lot of -of out-of-print magazines. I actually made a rather impulsive purchase as well. It uh, was an antique and a very delicate uh, La uh, Petite Journal, which is uh, like a newspaper. It was dated Sunday the 23rd of August 1896, and it was Uh, quite crumbly on the edges, the newspaper, and it had a lot of cover on the front page. And it was actually an artwork by an artist that I liked. So there were lots of things going for this beautiful newspaper. But being an impulsive buy, this was not the end of the day for me, which would have made a lot more sense. If I'd have really thought about it, I'd have gone at the end of the day. I also would have previously gone to La Poste and I would have purchased a cylinder so I could roll my newspaper up and uh, transport it cleverly. But no, that uh, wasn't the case. And I didn't want to leave it there for someone else to buy. So carefully carrying my newspaper around for the rest of the day and then gingerly trying to uh, bring it home with me. I've actually got it in my home here in, in Australia. Uh, what I've done is I framed it. It's it's in a frame, a, a black frame, and I think it's a great idea for a souvenir. They don't cost much and uh, you're bringing a really relevant part of Parisian French history into your home. And you, if it's hanging on your wall, you can see it all the time. So that's a little tip from me if you want an interesting, unusual souvenir. I actually wasn't going to talk so much about this, but I think it's a great idea. So I'm going to share that with you. That's what I've got hanging on one of my walls. What you could also do, it's great for a library if you think about it, library or a study. The newspapers have got a number of pages with them, so you could separate them and you could have like a series of framed prints. The was well, actually original newspaper, but you could uh, frame some different pages or some different sections of the newspaper and I think that would look uh, quite uh, quite interesting. So making the purchase, while maybe not clever, was one of my really favourite uh, things to bring home, and I keep looking at it all the time, and I love it. That's the magic of antiques, isn't it? You can uh, bring a little bit of history into your own home. Let's talk now a little bit about the history of the booksellers themselves. They've got quite a history, uh, and uh, because of their antiquity, They've been setting up their stalls along the River Seine since the 16th century, plying their trade from uh, from Pont-Marie to Quai de Louvre on the right bank and from Quai de la Tournelle to Quai Voltaire on the left bank. Now, altogether, the booksellers collectively are considered a site and they're protected by UNESCO as part of the French cultural heritage. The boxes were even used as secret letterboxes by the French resistance during the Second World War. Messages would be secretly left in the boxes and then uh, they would be picked up also in secret. So they have uh, quite a history, interesting history to them. The booksellers started by placing their wares spread on blankets on the ground. But after a while, rules were made that firstly were hotly debated And uh, the outcome ended up being that the sellers were unable to sell from their mobile sites. This changed, however, during the reign of Louis XVI, with the sellers welcomed back again. And that meant that members of the cultural and literal society could also support the sellers. And the sellers could uh, sell books and items that the people from these societies were interested in purchasing. During the French Revolution, this is quite interesting, they stocked revolutionary papers, 
political brochures and patriot songs during the French Revolution, which was from 1789 to 1795. Then they particularly also prospered when they started offering books that they had or other people had and they sourced, books pillaged from aristocratic libraries. So uh, that was when they became quite prosperous doing those uh, little bit shady deals. In 1859, the green stalls that you see today became the norm. So that's what was normally set up. They were made. It was a change uh, from how they used to display things into the green boxes. The green stalls were uh, installed at various points along the river. There are regulations governing the book uh, sellers. There are lots of regulations that strictly regulate what the sellers can do and what goods they can sell. Each bookseller can only sell and can only own up to four boxes and only one of those boxes can stock souvenirs or anything that's not books. That is, uh, when we say books, we also mean the ancient papers and journals and magazines. Sellers must agree and comply to keep open their boxes at least four days a week. And while they can have a family member or employee to help them, they must per- personally man their stall at least three uh, days of each week. Newcomers who might want a stall, they might want to create their own, set up their own business, create their business and have a stall, they must apply They must apply detailing their full credentials, including their literary knowledge and their prior experience in their CV to the Mahi, which is the city mayor. Stalls must also be painted in the colour carriage green, the same colour as all Paris park benches, antique signs and city railings. Now, I'm going to share with you a little bit later in another podcast about the carriage green and where that uh, comes from and the history behind that. That's pretty cool too. So um, listen out for for that on an upcoming podcast. These booksellers really are a Parisian institution. So I would recommend that when you're next in Paris, you stop, have a look at what they've got, have a chat to the booksellers who are delighted to talk to someone who is really interested rather than someone who's just going to go and snap all their photos and, and put them up on social media Uh, Some booksellers actually don't like photographs to be taken, but if you're interested, you have a chat with them, particularly if you make a purchase and show them that you're quite genuine, they're more than happy to be photographed often with their stall and their goods. And now a word from our sponsor, a French Collection Tours. Thinking of visiting France? A French Collection Tours offer inspirational, luxurious, escorted all-woman tours to Paris, Normandy, Brittany and Provence. Imagine seven days with a small group of like-minded women exploring the wonders of France. These fun and exclusive tours focus on culture and art, great food and drink, authentic locations and market trips and boutique shopping. A French Collection Tours are perfect to relax and unwind, re-energise and invigorate with everything taken care of for you. Your host, Annette Charlton, has lived part-time in France with her family for over 11 years and knows how to ensure your tour is perfect. Whether it's bucket list items or secret places Annette knows about, you will truly love the Parisian vibe. And if you want to experience Brittany like a local, then walking, quaint towns, beach walks will delight you. Or if the warmth of the south of France appeals to you, then you'll be spoilt amongst the charming villages and ancient sites on a French collection tour. So if you're thinking of travelling to France, take a look at a French collection tours and create your lasting memories while having the time of your life. Find out more at www.afrenchcollection.com Before our word from our sponsor... We were looking at and finding out a little bit more about the booksellers in their green stalls along the Seine River. Nearby, there's the best cream puffs in Paris. Want to find out more? This ties in perfectly once you've had a look at the books that the booksellers have got on offer and you're in that area. 
You might like to treat yourself to a delicious cream puff and it's literally just around the corner. The store I'm talking about and it's a little bit hidden so while you're wandering around you might not find it uh, easily. It's called Odette, the Odette Pastry Store. It's a pretty Parisian store and it's filled with display shelves of only cream puffs. Yes, the whole store is full of just cream puffs. Nestled in amongst its surrounding buildings, it's so easy to walk past. It's like snuck and, and, and nestled in between two other slender little buildings, all coloured quite differently. Odette is at 77 Rue Galland and it's well known to Parisians for selling only cream puffs. Or as they are named in French, show à la crème. It's a true Parisian pastry store. While there are pastry shops and bakeries everywhere in Paris, almost on every other street corner actually, Adette's different because instead of the array of the eclairs, the macarons, croissants, baguettes, you name it, Adette only bakes and sells cream puffs. And because they specialise only in them, they excel in both their flavour and they're quite creative. There's a creative flair to their uh, cream puffs. Visiting Odette and sampling a cream puff was on my own to visit or must do list on my first day in Paris. But because the shop is so well set into its surrounding buildings, I actually walked past and I walked around the shop on another on another street. I couldn't see it. It wasn't until my following visit to Paris, can you believe it? I just didn't find it at all, that I found the store and I eventually tasted one of the delicious cream puffs for myself. How do you make a cream puff? Deciding which flavour to try when you're in the store is not easy. There are so many. You won't probably be able to stop at one or two. The different flavoured puffs are created by flavouring the cream or the custard and then it's encased by soft dough and the frosting spread on the top of the puff, which is usually of the same flavour as the inside. Flavours usually available with Odette are vanilla, coffee, pistachio, cocoa, uh, cocoa Malibu, caramel, chocolate, citrus, I'll keep going, getting thirsty and hungry, praline, passion fruit and strawberry. If you're in Paris as a family, they do takeaway boxes. Their boxes are 6, 9, 12 or 18. But of course, with so many flavours, um, you can mix and match when you make up your box. It's a very uh, popular choice for, for businesses and corporate events also. They can custom make uh, cream puffs for you and the icing can have logos. There's lots of options, but if you're uh, on, on your own or in your family, you can duck in and choose which ones you want to be popped in a box. The store, when I found it, it's so delightful. It has small outdoor seating and it has an upstairs area which if you get the chance to sit near the window, it'll give you a great view of the cathedral. You'll be able to see Notre Dame just across. The store itself is built on an angle between other buildings and it seems to almost be moulded into the triangular square that it uh, it lives on. Odette is located in an area that has lots of attractions. So as well as having a look at the booksellers, it's uh, right near the cathedral the English bookshop, Shakespeare and Company, the famous booksellers, as we mentioned, and across the road, uh, there's the bridges going over the the river. Odette is also near the stunning Gothic church, saint julien le Pouve, which is one of the oldest churches in Paris. After receiving many requests to expand and offer franchise stores, Odette now has three locations in Paris, and it has two franchise stores, one in Doha and one in Jeddah. I really recommend for a true Parisian experience that you dine in. I suggest that you sit down, enjoy the view, watch everyone going past, enjoy your cream puff. But um, if you would like to, there's also a little uh, park nearby. You can take your puffs you can go and sit in the park and uh, you might even find that uh, there's, um, you know, the odd bird or two that uh, is interested in your delicious cream puff. So that's a couple of things that you may not have known about 
when you're visiting Paris. I do hope that that's of interest to you. And uh, I'll see you next time when we delve into a few more places and things about Paris that maybe you didn't know. Thanks for listening. And so that brings us to the end of another podcast and our time together. Thanks for listening. I've really enjoyed your company and I look forward to sharing more on France and all things French with you next week. Until then, you can head over to the blog at www afrenchcollection.com for the full blog post. And so it's um, Mercy from me and Abiento. Mm-hmm.